winter had come and gone, and the island was slowly starting to get back to normal. But there was a problem. After Thomas and his crew had brought Roger home in an attempt to escape Sleezus, they had blown up the suspension bridge that connected Sodor on the main line. So this meant the engines had to now take a detour. They didn't mind, but the only one who complained was Gordon, and he would not stop moaning. to think my passengers have to be delayed because of Thomas deciding to be like James Bond. Gordon, we almost died. We were trying to keep ourselves safe. Yes, but regardless of that, you've disrupted the very important routes. It's disgraceful. Disgusting! And despicable! You weren't expecting us to include that, were you? I swear, our sense of humour has really changed over the past year. Just then, the fat controller arrived. Attention engines, I understand the recent changes in the timetable has caused some confusion and... No! Anyways, I wanted to remind you all that this is a temporary change, thanks to the extremely convenient arrival of somebody willing to oversee the reconstruction. Who is he, sir? I'm glad you asked. You can come out now. And so out from the door of a car in the distance, stepped out someone Thomas had hoped he'd seen the last of. Good morning, engines. Ah, Mr. Goodman! Oh, so you're allowed to make pop culture references. Okay, I see how it is. Why, yes, Thomas, how did you know? <laughs> oh, don't worry, sir. We just had a little encounter over the Christmas period. His reaction is just a running joke between us. Isn't it, Thomas? Eep. Well, in any case, Mr. Goodman here has an excellent track record with construction, and in particular, designing things new and right up to date. Exactly, Topham. You are too kind. You will not be seeing much of him. He'll be in his office down at the station, near the suspension bridge. If he's anywhere near that thing, then I'll refuse to go over it. All right, the joke's over now, Thomas. Even if you and Goodman are friends, you ought to show him some more respect. Thomas agreed, but he was still very suspicious. Later that day, Thomas took Mr. Goodman to the site of the suspension bridge. Here you go, Mr. Goodman. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, go away now. Thomas was glad to. But Mr. Goodman quietly chuckled. <laughs> I meant what I said, Thomas. The time of the diesels is now. He then looked across and saw men with a diesel and a truck coupled behind it with the winding gear. Perfect. It begins. Later that day, Thomas met Percy at the harbour. Hello, 
Thomas. But Thomas didn't answer. He was engrossed in his thoughts. He's up to something. I'm sure of it. Oh, you heard what the fat controller said. I'm sure Mr. Goodman isn't that bad. Maybe you two just got off on the wrong foot when you first met. Thomas looked blankly at Percy. Percy, did you seriously just say that? What do you mean? Would you call sweet-talking, luring an engine to the scrapyard, then trying to kill said engine in the process as getting off on the wrong foot? And anyway, in regards to getting in the wrong, it's Goodman. Well, I... I... Okay, point taken. I'm sorry, but my suspicions are high. We need to find out what's going on. Fancy going to the site tonight? I would, but... But what, Percy? Up with it. I don't like the suspension bridge. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You don't have a thing for heights, do you? It's not that I don't like heights, but it's just that the, the bridge has always been very rickety and it, it will wobble a lot. I just don't like it. One wrong move and I could plummet to my own death. Percy, I normally wouldn't ask, but we need to find out what's going on. My conscience is playing up. Just then, Fergus puffed up alongside. Afternoon all. Why the long faces? Fergus, Goodman's back. Wait, you can't be serious. Fergus, I joke about a lot of things, but when it comes to the man who wanted me, you, and Toad dead, is not one of the joking matters. What's he doing here? He's been contracted to build the new suspension bridge. Fergus gasped. What the heck is the fat controller playing at? Doesn't he know Goodman is the crook who tried to kill us? Well, if he won't believe us, we'll need to go in ourselves. Percy, you coming with us? No, I won't be able to. I need to do a very special delivery with the post train tonight. Then he puffed away. That night, Thomas and Fergus puffed to the suspension bridge. When they arrived, they looked ahead at the bridge. Well, it looks like it's almost completed. Thomas and Fergus's drivers jumped down and walked onto the bridge. It feels all right when you walk on it. Yeah, but Frank, it's because we're people. The only way we'd find out is if we test Thomas and Fergus on it. Thomas and Fergus gulped. Their drivers climbed aboard and slowly and surely the two engines moved onto the bridge. The bridge creaked and groaned loudly as they puffed across. Then, Thomas felt a big bump. Ouch! What was that? Thomas reversed back from the bump and his driver looked down and gasped. There's a bomb wired under the bridge. What? We must tell the Fat Controller at once. That is precisely what you won't do. Then, Thomas felt a diesel coupled to his buffers. You won't breathe a word or anything again. Take him away. Fergus! Thomas! Fergus! 
just raced on after Thomas and the Diesel. But the Diesel was very fast, and Thomas's driver tried to apply the brakes, but he couldn't stop. Suddenly, the diesel came to a sharp bend in the tracks, and the coupling suddenly snapped. Thomas started rolling on his own, but the diesel couldn't stop, and he careened down the line. He curved into the yards, and then crashed straight through the buffers. At last, Fergus caught up with Thomas. Thomas, are you okay? Yes. Oh, I'm fine, Fergus. Well, what do we do now? We're miles from the central part of Sodor. It will take us at least a day to get back, and the bridge opening is tomorrow. Well, if we don't leave now, we won't make it in time. Then the two engines puffed quickly away. The next day, Gordon and Percy were waiting with two special trains. Percy had a train of passengers who were from the small towns and villages nearby who had arrived to attend the unveiling of the bridge. And Gordon had the mayor, the fat controller, and other railway officials aboard, along with Mr. Goodman. The event had became so big that even the Flying Scotsman came over with a train of enthusiasts from the other railway. Ah, this railway is always such a joy to visit. Are you ready, brother? Yes, of course. Then, as soon as the guard blew his whistle, the three engines set off for the bridge. Percy, however, was still feeling nervous. Chin up, little person. There is nothing to be scared of. Thomas and Fergus should have been back by now. Where are they? Oh, they'll turn up, don't worry. Now let's go back. We don't want to be late. Meanwhile, Thomas and Fergus were racing through the countryside. pulled into Knapford Station as Duck was returning from the Little Western. <sighs> Duck, please tell me, they haven't left yet. They have, actually. About five minutes ago. Five minutes? We have now have to prevent a disaster! Wait a minute. What disaster? Thomas? Fergus? Meanwhile, Gordon and Percy were puffing along the main line.
fastest and best, fastest and best. The passengers were having a splendid time. They enjoyed the countryside and seeing the sights of Sodor pass them by. But Percy was still worried. Thomas, please come. Meanwhile, on the train, the fat controller and the railway officials were discussing at the table. But Mr. Goodman briefly left the table and he whispered something to two of the guards. So, are we in agreement to Tom Hat? What is this, this stock exchange? Gentlemen, you have been here hundreds of times and never found any major issues outside of the completely unpreventable accidents. <laughs> in most cases, anyway. Quite so. The railway board wants to make sure you are still providing us with the money's worth. Yeah, um, yeah, you like getting your sticky fingers down there, don't you? A person recently had a discussion with the main person of this project. Mr. Goldman. Goodman, if you please. Then I shall be swimming in a pool of gold and happy as that duck on the telly before this day is out. Shh! Goodman, do you want to get us sued by Mr. Mouse? Uh, my apologies. A mysterious voice. Who are you talking to? Uh, just having a little mutter to myself. Well, take my tip. Be careful of the walls of these coaches. They are quite thin. You never know who might be listening. Sir, we are discussing the simple matter of a new bridge. I hardly think that it will be of anyone's interest. Though it shall be in due time. Please elaborate. Sir, you know I own my own ensemble of diesel engines. If you are suggesting that I am to replace my own engines... Hardly, sir. If you remember, you already own two or three. Four of that narcissistic Class 08 of yours can make up his mind whether he's coming or going. All my engines have proven their worth, and you can think twice if I am going to give another trial to those foul-smelling computer-age zombies. No offence there, Boko. None taken, sir. Though I don't think the others will like it. And there's another thing. I only have your word for it, and I am not wasting my rapidly depleting funds on allowing your engines to all come on trial. So I'm sorry, Mr. Goodman, but the answer is no. You are one for charismatic speeches, sir, but not for smart decision-making. Besides, your engines did try to warn you. I tried my hardest, but unfortunately, only one of us gets to be the bad guy. What is this? Some cheesy 80s crime filler? What are you talking about? Ladies, gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. I regret to inform you that we are heading directly towards a new bridge that has been armed with bombs, set for detonation as soon as we cross it. So if you would kindly like to use this opportunity to call loved ones and say your prayers, me and the so-called controller of the railway would greatly appreciate it. Don't you see, Mr. Goodman? This train will blow up to Kingdom Come with you in it. <laughs> Is that so? You there, old chaps. Would you like to pull your master keys out of your pockets? The guards looked around in their pockets for their respective keys to no avail. Mr. Goodman hooked the keys on his finger with a sly look on his face. Then, Mr. Goodman came onto the bridge. Cheerio, Hattie. On the bright side, at least it'll be slimmer by the time this ordeal is done. Passengers, behold! You will finally reach new heights thanks to my wonderful bridge, with a real fireworks display featuring all of you as the ammunition. Now... I would stay, but I have a special train waiting. Bye. Just then, Annie looked down to the rails. Oh, look, everyone. There's a bomb on the rails with a countdown going. Then it clicked. A bomb with a countdown going? Oh, my! All right, 
everyone! We mustn't panic! We mustn't panic! Just then, Thomas and Fergus puffed up to the bridge. Percy! Gordon! Thomas! Thomas! Mr. Gibbons left a bomb on the rails and we don't know how long it's got. What? Well, get off there now! Fergus buffered up to the back of Clarabel and quickly helped Percy off the bridge. Gordon tried to start, but he couldn't move. What's going on? The brakes are jammed. Gordon must have jammed the brakes when he went through the back. We are stuck and we can't open the coaches because he's took the master keys. Thomas, help! Don't worry, Gordon. I know what to do. Thomas quickly reversed back a good distance. Coaches knock. Don't fail me now. He charged towards Gordon and bumped the coach so hard the brake snapped and Gordon started moving. Thomas's buffers locked within the buffers in the back coach and they knocked him off the rails. Cinders and ashes! The bomb was getting closer and closer to the countdown. What are we going to do? Percy quickly turned around on the Y and then quickly raced back to the bridge. But as he approached the bridge, he started getting more and more nervous. I am brave. I am brave. Thomas says I'm brave. So I am brave. Percy gently buffed onto the bridge. He pushed against Thomas. And slowly and carefully, Thomas was put back on the rails. Then, the two engines quickly puffed off and they got off the bridge just in time. The engines were safe. Percy, you did it! It's not easy being brave. Are you alright, Thomas? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Percy. But you should be happy too. You conquered your fear. You came across the bridge without hesitation. Yeah, except one thing. I'm going to tell you this. Stop being James Bond. There's only so often this bridge can be blown up. And even Thomas had to laugh. That night, the Fat Controller came to speak to the engines. Well, the passengers are all alright, and the railway official said despite the bridge holdup, our inspection went well but they will be back for another assessment soon. However, Flying Scotsman and the Enthusiast praised your bravery today, Thomas and Fergus, saying you are true prides of the railway. What about Mr. Goodman, sir? He unfortunately escaped, but the police are hunting for him now and he's no longer controller on the other railway. Mr. White is now the new controller and you can trust him, at least. He used to be a controller on a heritage line, but well done, Thomas and Fergus. You two are real heroes. What about Percy, sir? He saved the day by saving me from the bridge. Of course. Well done, Percy. You are all really useful engines. And then the Fat Controller left. Thomas, I need to ask. What's up, Percy? Do you think we'll see Mr. Goodman again? Oh, no doubt. We always need a crackpot in our lives to help the ratings. Hopefully not, though. But if he does try anything again, at least we know his tricks. Oh well. No matter what happens, nothing will ever separate us.
Never say never ever, Percy. I feel like a storm is coming. What do you mean, Thomas? I don't know, but there's something up. Then Percy heard something in the distance. It sounded like a low, faint whistle. Did you hear that? Hear what, Percy? Oh, nothing. The three engines sat in the shed, pondering and nervous for the future. And what was to come.